people have addiction, yeah. mental health, or just, just like you said, just out there, just be out there. So how are you going to meet some of these people on where they're at to where you, you can get them into housing and out of the neighborhood that they're tent? That's an excellent question as well. So um, again, we do know that we have 2,000 vacant SROs right now. And you've heard before, Ben, how the department and Jeff Kaczynski is now trying to plan to build upon that. Uh, they haven't yet released what the division of their housing is going to look like, if it's going to go like harm reduction, as you're saying. But it is well and informed. Uh, I was at the meeting with Jeff Kaczynski about three weeks ago at NEMBA, at Northeast Merchants Business Association. Um, and they were flat out about, listen, we have nearly 50% that have drug and substance abuse issues, and that's still not talking about what mental health percentage uh, we're dealing with with folks who need those kind of services. I think the department, as now, is still in a phase of taking a full analysis of the situation in terms of how many folks are in services now that percentage-wise are dealing with these and therefore will translate to what we develop going forward, you know, if 30% is, has this issue, then we need 30% in terms of our development for housing. They're still not there yet, but I'm pretty confident that we're going to find out sooner or later. But this Prop Q will be the tool that they use to bring folks and then divide them appropriately into where they need to go. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I know a woman that's homeless, and I know her very well. And some of the issues she's had, has had, whatever, one of it is she... Uh, she may have qualified for a room through the hot team. The problem was they wanted her to sign her life away practically, you know, like, uh, you know, like that she, she did not have problems handling her money. She just didn't have a place to live. And also this woman had a job with Muni, but it was one of those GA jobs that never translated into a real Full-time. job. Yeah. And, uh, and also, she, the, whole, the shelter system is that uh, uh, she, she, would, she was, uh, de- they deducted a, a certain amount, a lot of her GA for, for the shelter bed. And uh, that, that what happened was she just had $65 to basically live on. Uh, she's uh, now disabled, and, uh, um, but it's, uh, so she gets a little more money, but the thing is, this this is kind of like um, a downward spiral. There are people with jobs that that don't have housing, you know, and so if if they have to sign their life away for a shelter bed and then, then somehow try to get to their job from a shelter, I mean, what's going on with the? I mean, we're not talking about people with. I mean, people always talk about how people are have. Uh, was it uh, addiction problems or drugs? They, a lot of times it is that you know the system. They just couldn't afford the rent anymore. Yeah. You know, they, I mean, they, you know, I they, that 100%. you know, and uh, you know, they, a fire, a fire could happen. Okay. So she, the thing is, uh, she knows of other people who they wanted, they wanted them to sign a power of attorney over. You know, and, and these are people that didn't need that for, for that to happen to them. So there's things that happen to people, and also the other thing is, shove these shelters, are hire people that have been through the system, and you would think that these people would have some kind of compassion, but sometimes that doesn't happen. They, they you know, basically, uh, you know, they look down upon the people that are in the system, you know, and they tend to, you know like to make rules or, or like to you know catch people yeah. you know and it, within, you know and uh, it's it's what's going on is really terrible i thank god i'm not in that that situation mm-hmm. but I, knowing one person that that's been through that has told me chapter and verse what's going on it scares the hell out of me that so many people are subject to that why subject people to losing a, a tent when that's all they got yeah, so uh, that was really great. So the so it, the facts are that the system is currently convoluted. We don't have enough space, and that is why we I think we do need to give Jeff Kaczynski the most time we can so they can keep developing, keep taking analysis in these situations. We've heard a little bit about the rollout. Um, in terms of taking people away from their tents, we're not actually coming at them to take them away from their space. We are trying to find a balance between 
right? And so what we're saying is that if the call does come in, that we don't respond necessarily with with clearing of it, which is currently what will happen now. If the if a wrong unit or someone has a bad day right now and they come to that tent encampment, that person could have their stuff taken away right now without any uh, knowledge of what to do next. So what we're saying is that if that has to happen, there needs to be housing, there needs to be offer, there needs to be transportation, and there needs to be time before that person has to leave. And then they have the option to take that or to move. You know, they don't, not right then and there, you know, make a decision and take or I'm taking your stuff and have to deal with that shop. They have the option. That's what we're trying to provide with this and the structure that protects them as well as the neighborhoods. Well, Care.cash is what they charge people for the shelter beds, which they might not be able to keep. Yeah. So, I mean, there must be a slush fund now of all the, that's you know, and, you know, and, and then, you know, what are they doing to help the people that are on the street, how to get them in, you know, uh, it's, you know, like I say, a, a person shouldn't have to sign over their, their life. Oh, okay. Um, we have to move on. Uh, if there's any one more question, because uh, we need to move on and uh, the other general clarification. Uh, so, any other questions? One question, last one. Then we just need to move on. Thank you. Thank you. We'd like to come by with signs with the, with sheets in case folks do support. We love to have like your information, and let you know a little bit more about this yes on prop Q as it develops. Um, so if we can, we'd love to just walk around. Uh, well, first, I should let you know offhand, uh, the alliance does not endorse. Yeah. Uh, there are yeah. there's several entities that are in this room right now that will be doing endorsements, uh, but I can I can talk to you offline about that because I can't talk to you. Yeah, yeah, the organization is not part of You can see when you get but, stuff donated, we're yeah, not, yeah, yeah. you can't mix the two together. <laughs> Don't card by for I do. Well, you write it on the back. But yes, okay. th thank you. And I mean, obviously, you know, thank you. people yeah. in this room, individuals are free to, you know. So we don't hope to, 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 to interrupt your presentation. How they want. <laughs> well, uh, okay, and so next up we have. Now we're up to Manuel. Uh, with uh, so here on behalf of the Department of the Environment. Uh, yeah, I'm going to fix that in just one second. So, see a lot of tired faces, so if you want to yawn, get up and stretch, stand up, get a drink, feel free. I'm just going to park it up so that you can see the uh, yeah. position again so that you can see the screen. compost and recycling programs in San Francisco. How many of you are business owners? Yeah. How many of you, okay. How many of you are residents? All right, so the program's the same for whether you own a business, work at a business, or you live here in San Francisco. Yeah, that property owner. Who's a property owner? <laughs> or manager? <laughs> All right, I didn't forget about you either. So San Francisco, uh, I'm not sure if you've heard, but they have man a mandatory recycling and composting. Um, and actually, uh, we have a zero waste goal also here in San Francisco. Um, so the goal is to send zero waste to landfill by the year 2020. Um, but you know we're still going to produce waste, so where does it go? And, and the, the goal is to send all of our material to uh, recycling facilities and to compost facilities to turn it into organic compost fertilizer. Um, but we really want to reduce the amount of waste that's going to landfill. Um, and uh, currently, the city as a whole diverts 80% of all materials that are discarded uh, from the landfill, so that's really great, but with the goal of zero waste, we need to get to higher diversion. 
and as it says there, you know, it will require the participation of all the businesses and all the residents to get there. Uh, as I mentioned, there's a mandatory recycling and composting ordinance, and as residents and uh, folks that work in San Francisco, you're required to properly separate your, uh, or, or properly discard of your compostables and your recyclables, and only trash material should be going into the trash can. Uh, so you have three choices. Uh, everything's color coded, so it's really uniform across the city. Composting bins or organic bins are green. Recycling bins are blue, and trash bins are black. How many of you are familiar with the different colors of the bins? We have some of them. Oh, great, awesome. Yeah, so they're they're all over. But you know what? Excuse me, Andrew. There are kids in the bins. Right, right. Yeah, it's it's really tough and you know, we really just ask that folks participate and and if you're doing the right thing, you know, we really appreciate that. Um, it is difficult when you're trying to get residents to do this you know, correctly. With the businesses, there's, there are some other tools that we have, uh, mainly by affecting the pocketbooks of the businesses if they don't participate properly. But, um, you know, the city recognizes that there's a challenge in multifamily and, and we really focus on education, outreach, and providing tools to, to residents so that they can, uh, that those that want to can properly recycle and compost. And I actually have some materials I can leave with you folks after I'm done. Um, so we'll just go through really quickly about what's recycling. Um, first off, let's, let's talk about, as I said, recycling. Uh, we have paper, clean paper. Um, next are the containers, so glass containers, glass food and beverage containers, plastic food and beverage containers, and uh, as you can see here, you can also recycle detergent bottles, soap bottles. Uh, it doesn't just have to have food. Uh, here are some other plastic items, five gallon buckets. Uh, basically, all rigid plastics can be recycled here in the city of San Francisco. Um, so what that means is soft plastics like a plastic bag, saran wrap, uh, Ziploc bags. If you buy a bottle of water and it's wrapped in plastic packaging, like shrink wrap, that's all garbage. You can crumple that type of plastic up in your hand that's like a quick and easy test. If you can crumple it up, it's garbage. But if it's rigid, like for example, a, a soda bottle or a water bottle holds its shape, that's recyclable. Question. Okay, we get a lot of we get a lot of food in plastic, plastic little plastic containers that are rigid that are rigid and you know clear plastic, black plastic. You know, there's some you know some almost rubberized plastic. You know, plastic. You know, all that would go in recycle. Uh, yeah, the uh, rubberized plastic, I'm not quite sure. Uh, well, it, that it's in it, 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 if, if it's any type of plastic that's like an inner tube, um, you no, know, I'm that's just not talking about the food container, the clear plastic food containers yeah. that they, you yeah, know, Chinese looks, food, you know, they slap it shut and uh, they give it to you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of takeout containers now, there's like the bottom part is a hard black plastic, uh -huh. and the top is like a clear plastic. That's all recyclable. Oh, okay. Yeah, make sure you eat that Chinese food. Or if it spoils or you don't want it, you can throw it in the compost bin. But the plastic can definitely be recycled. recycled. And if you're an A-plus student, overachiever, you can even rinse out your recyclables before you put them into the recycling bin, and that really helps out, too. Um, the, way, the reason why that really helps is because all of the recycling goes into one container, and the paper is really... Um, sensitive to food waste. So the cleaner that your containers are when they go into recycling, the higher likelihood, the less contamination in the recycling and the higher likelihood that this material will be recycled because it's clean, it's not contaminated with food. So it's really important that you know, you're not chucking a you know, hamburger in the recycling because that could damage the, the quality of the paper and it may be thrown out instead of being recycled. Um, so here we can go in a little more depth with paper, um, all types of clean paper. So we've got white paper, colored office paper, envelopes, I mean, you can read the rest with you know, any junk mail that you receive, that can go into your recycling. 
Uh, shredded paper is also acceptable. And of course, cardboard. As I mentioned, we've got some glass bottles and jars. It's really the glass that you buy at the grocery store. So if you buy a jar of pickles, buy a bottle of wine, a beer bottle, that's the type of glass that we can take in the recycling. If, it, if this um, window, you know, one of these windows happened to break, if uh, someone broke your car auto glass, that would go in the garbage. Um, it's, it's a different, uh, the, the glass, that type of glass has different properties from the glass you get at a grocery store. So it's not recyclable with that type of glass. Um, so just keep it separate, put it in the trash. Question? Yeah, um, from what I'm hearing is that, that they're closing a lot of the recycling uh, refinery places. Right. You know, so what are people that, that don't recycle of, what are people going to do that do recycle? What's what's the thing about recycling? That's, Where are you going to take them? That's a right. big problem in San Francisco because the bus drivers won't let you on the bus if you don't have a vehicle. And you, we have to go all the way out to Bayshore and that is a problem. They have one up at Safeway and they shut it down when they built this new building next to it. Right. People didn't want to look down and see all the, the people recycling like that. Center. Um, on so that's a problem. Yeah, yeah. that's that's a very concerning trend that um, we've been seeing. My suggestion to that is to talk to your supervisor and to figure out the last legislative because it's a thing about what's happening. Do you want to say that on camera? That's a good point. We have no. The problem we're having is because they're parking lots. Developers are eating up all the spaces that we call soft sites. And when they find a soft site, they're saying, oh, somebody comes along and says, well, it's worth money, and so we're going to build the building there because it makes the value of the land worth more. So we end up losing our soft sites. And, uh, and so the only way is one of two things. You either kick out the supervisor that's not helping us, uh, or you get a supervisor to help us write the legislation to uh, change the, so that we put more in or find better ways, because it's very simple. One of the ways, though, there are machines that do recycling, mm -hmm. so they don't have to be a big old uh, lot. You can actually go to a machine. So there are a variety of ways, I, you know, because I actually, I was upset too when you, I've seen uh, several of them lost in District 6, uh, because uh, we know that a lot of people, uh, which by the way, a lot of people got their uh, another source of income. Right, right. And uh, people still go through all the uh, garbage bins and all that 24-7 in this neighborhood, uh, recycling. Because once it's out on the sidewalk, it's open game to go into the garbage bins, even though, unless they're locked, um, to uh, take out the recycling, because it's nobody's property. Yeah. And, and you know, folks at the city do want, they want to see those recycling centers. Um, there are reasons why the, they're closing. Um, you mentioned some of them. Um, but well, well, the space that the space that they closed on Market um, by Safeway has been vacant ever since. Since they didn't put anything there, right. people were saying it was because they built these apartments, these new apartments there, and the people that were going to live there didn't want to look down because a lot of homeless people recycle and they use shopping carts, and they didn't they, they didn't want to look down, I guess, and see. The I don't know if that's true or not. But it was sure a lot more convenient than having to get on the bus and the bus drivers don't want to let you on. Right. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah. it's we, we recognize that it's becoming more difficult to recycle in the city. Like I said, you know, the city wants, um, wants its residents to be able to recycle their materials, whether they put it in their curbside bin at their home, they utilize the recycling you know, facilities uh, at, their, at their apartment building, uh, you know, at work. Um, but yeah, it is it is unfortunately becoming more and more difficult. And I think the more that you can uh, engage with your supervisors and other representatives, yeah. the more that they'll understand that there's a need for recycling. Uh, yes. The reason why they move the ones from up there by you guys, the tenants around there were complaining about the smell and all the traffic. So that's why it's because the lot is still vacant. Yeah. Yeah.
the lot still, still gets used for smell. pumpkins and, and trees, things like that. Other things get yeah, used for the It didn't and smell. Yeah. Yeah. You could smell when they were up there. Right. But that's not in our house. That's what they do when you live up there. We need to find the person. Like I said, money and stuff. They're going to complain. Like I said, that's the beat.